Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor John Pope from Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. You know, and we are so glad that you have joined us today for another session of the Worship Hour. We know that God has something great in store for us. And what we are doing is we are expecting to receive the blessing. Do you want a blessing today? Then I challenge you to expect to receive the blessing. Come on, everybody. Let's go to church. In the house of Lord. The master showed his mercy and his grace to shine for us just one more day. Thank you for right yesterday. Give us the opportunity to celebrate today. It is a privilege and honor to see each and every one of you. I'm Dick Wilson. I've been doing the prayer this morning. Amen. And my Dick and brother, Ray, will be doing the scripture. Good Amen. Amen. If you would, stand if you can. Ah! And ready ah! to the word. We're going to go to Psalms, Psalm 145. Psalm 145, starting in verse 17 to 21. When you're there, would you say amen? amen. That sounds like the majority. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. Gracious in all his works. Uh -huh. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Well. To all who call upon him yes, in sir. truth. Yes, he will fulfill the desires of those who fear him. Mm -hmm. He also will hear their cry and save them. Right. The Lord preserves all who love him, uh -huh. but all the wicked he will destroy. Well. Verse 21, my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. And all flesh shall bless his holy name. I'm sorry about that. Forever and ever. That's, may God add a reading, blessing to the reading and the doers of his word. This morning, Coach Prince said, Your father, we come to you, Father. The song will be something that we know about. And I ask you, we need to pray and put on your show for the rest of you. Let's come to you just as only you have, which you so rightly deserve. We thank you, Master. Master, we thank you for our last time on the morning. And Master, we thank you for our early morning last. We want to thank you. Bless each and every one within the sound of my voice this morning, Lord. Bless the one who's here, and bless the one who's on the way. Father, we thank you for our church this morning. Father, just continue to guide us and keep us in your yes. Lord, protection. Thank you. Just be with us, Lord. Thank you. Father, for you, Father, I thank you for picking out the work of Marvin and Clay, turning all life around. Lord. I do thank you. Because I have the Father, thank you for your daughter, Jesus, Son Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary, who shed his precious blood that I might have this abundance of life. Father, I thank you, Master. Father, I thank you for our pastor and our first lady. Father, give us that little go from heart to heart and from breast to breast, Master. Let be with it in God. Father, we thank you for all they do here at the church for us, Master. Father, I thank you for each church observed and open to your name. Thank you, Father. Bless every church door that's open in our first city, Master. Yes, Father, just continue to, to rain down yes. your shine and glory, Master. Yes. Just be with us all, Master. Yes. And Father, say a special prayer for this whole country, land which we live in. Yes. Father, it may not be great as it once was, Master. But Master, we, we try and go. Lord, just be with us and God. Father, I thank you for your daughter son again, Master. Yes. Yes. For down on the cross. But Master they tell me, he said, the third day, he said, he got up. Yeah. And he said, all power, all power is in you. Thank you, Master, for getting up. For getting up and going back home and right hand to God. Thank you. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Father, when I come to the end of, end of my time, when I sing my last song, I said my last prayer. Father, just please know me. You're poor on the street. Somewhere. Somewhere around your person, don't you? Yeah. So when I see the pay, we go. And every day, every day, we 
every day I'll be back soon. Father, we can come and give you praise. Master, I start down here. So when I get up there, Master, I'll see you there. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Good God Almighty. Thank you, Mr. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm thinking for my daughter and wife and my son and daughter and mother. Just continue to guide and keep you your little world. May that bless us and we're up to the end of my time. And I've done all I can. Father, just please remember me. You're going on the surface. In our presence, Son Jesus Christ. We pray for more. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
So we thank God for all he's done and all he is doing. Today, we celebrate in the church over the life of the church. We celebrate baptisms where someone will come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. We celebrate the Lord's Supper where we remember the great work that Jesus Christ did for us right. on the cross. Yes, sir. And then there are times when we celebrate when God calls people to a special service with him. Uh -huh. And today is one of those days when we are celebrating the call of God for one of his servants. Amen. We celebrate by giving that person a license to preach the gospel. And I want to let everybody know that the call to ministry comes with a great responsibility. When performing the work of ministry, those who are called to ministry have the opportunity to influence lives of many people. So since that influence is there and God gives that particular platform, people must take that call to ministry serious because God holds us accountable for the things that we do. And the call to ministry is not one that is a foot race. It's not a sprint. The call to ministry takes perseverance. The call to ministry takes faith. The call to ministry requires that we learn to be empathetic with people, but we also have to learn to be sympathetic because people go through trials and tribulations in life. When one is called to ministry, one is called to be an evangelist, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. One is called to be a lifelong learner because we have to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. We don't come preaching our opinions or the most popular doctrine that is out there. Our responsibility is to preach the unadulterated word of God. Amen. As we are called to ministry, we are called to be humble servants of the living God. We have to humble ourselves before God so that the Holy Spirit can work in us. Amen. We don't want you looking at us as we stand here, but we want you to look to heaven. We want you to look to God Almighty. We are called to be encouragers because there are those who are going through and we are called to equip. And that's one of the most important tasks that we have is to be able to equip the saints as we are all walking this path of sanctification together. God has called us and he has established us to be disciples of Jesus Christ. When we call, when we are called, or when someone says that they are called, it is not a, an announcement that I take lightly. Because if someone comes to me, the Bible lets me know that in 1 Timothy 1 and 12, that, or 1 Timothy 5 and 22, 22 not to lay hands on anyone suddenly. So just because somebody comes and says, I'm called, it doesn't mean that they will be up preaching or teaching or leading a ministry that very next week. See, the Bible lets me know that we have to go through that period of examination, that period of review. And the lady that has come today, the minister that has come today, I'm already calling it for. The minister that has come today has gone through that time of review. Today, Minister Valerie Robles is going to come and she is going to be preaching her initial sermon under the heading of an initial sermon. Now many of you that know Sister Valerie know she's been preaching sermons ever since she's been here. Amen. She's been preaching sermons ever since she's been here, but today we're going through the licensing process. 
She announced her calling over a year and a half ago. And during that time, we have had different classes in theology and pulpit etiquette and sermon preparation in prep for this particular day. She brought me the word that God had given her and she said, I'm ready, Pastor. And I put all the red marks all over it and said, well, let's take it back, let's edit it a little bit. Let's look at it from this standpoint. She brought it back and she said, I'm ready, Pastor. I said, well, let's take it back because right now you have five messages all wrapped up into one. So let's take it back and let's edit it a little bit more. And she came back again. She didn't say, I'm tired of him editing my stuff. <clears throat> but she said, help me to make it better. Help me so that I can convey the message that God wants to convey to the people. She was steadfast. She was unmovable. She is determined to abound in the work of the Lord. Yes. For she knows that as she begins this journey, yes. that her labor will not be in vain in the Lord. Yes. So today, my brothers and my sisters, on January the 28th, 2024, during this service here at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, we're going to hear the initial sermon from Mr. Valerie Rose. Thank you. Our, our passage 
is Acts 1, verse 8. And if y'all would please stand and we can read it together, if you'll just follow with me after I take a drink. Acts 1, 8. I hear some pages, so I'm waiting a moment. And it's on the screen. There we go. Read with me, please. Acts 1 a. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, or witnesses to me, in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. You may be seated, and let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for saving me, Lord. I thank you for saving all of us that, that know you, and I pray, Lord, that if anyone is here that doesn't know you, Father, that they would know you today. Today would be their birthday spiritually. Thank you, Father, for all your blessings. Holy Spirit, you speak this word, Lord. You speak this word. Speak to our hearts, Father. Every heart here has a need. Speak to our hearts. Come now, Lord Jesus. Come now. In the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. We are empowered and we are commanded to preach the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit empowers you to preach Jesus everywhere. It's not just pastor's job. It's all of your jobs, all of our jobs. Well, let's talk a little about the book of Acts. Acts was written by Luke, who was a physician. He was a close friend, a companion of the apostle Paul. Well, Luke also wrote the book of Luke. Mm -hmm. And it ends with Jesus' ascension when he went up to heaven. In the book of Acts, now let's talk about that. It begins with this very same setting of Jesus going to heaven. And he's instructing the disciples and he's telling them, go to Jerusalem. Wait there for the Father's promise of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, just before Jesus was going into heaven in a cloud, the disciples are still wanting to know. When is Israel's earthly kingdom going to be restored? <laughs> well, they didn't realize that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit had a greater plan for this world. Yes, His Holy Spirit filling and reigning in all of our hearts, and that includes you and me, brother and sister, and that whatever they bound on earth and they loosed on earth would be bound in heaven and loosed in heaven. Praise God. Why did Holy Spirit give them power? That's a question. Why? Because God wanted them to have that anointing and appointing to bring his salvation to lost souls. You, my friends, are also the appointed and the anointed. Let me tell you, he has called you. I experienced as a young child when I was six the anointing and appointing to bring his salvation to lost souls souls. I experienced it though. I experienced him as a child. I was very sick a lot of the time. My dad remembers. I still remember him wiping me down with those cold towels just to bring a fever down. And he, and I remember also going to the front of the church and I'd go sick to church and my grandfather, Camilo Alfredo Rios, would lay his hands on my little head and he would pray for me and I would very often be healed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Immediately. Well, you know what that meant to me? I got to go outside and play. <laughs> well, but what I didn't realize then was my grandfather had Holy Spirit power, not just to heal, but to bring people to that appointing and that salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? You have that same anointing and appointing if you have Jesus in your life. And he is going to bring great changes to our lives because of that. And that's why we must know who the Holy Spirit is, I'm sorry, who he is, what he does, and what he empowers you to do. All right? Yeah. We must understand first that he is God Almighty, Holy Spirit. He is a person who is divine and the third person of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. 
The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are God. Yeah. All three are God. Together they form the Holy Trinity, and they were co-eternal and co-equal persons. Right. He has feelings. Amen. Holy Spirit feels. He cries. Amen. Mm. The Father, Elohim, is the one true living God Almighty, the eternal Lord over all. Amen. Over all things. Yeah. The Son, Jesus, is God who came to us in human form and he conquered death in his flesh for you and for me. Praise God. Yeah. Holy Spirit is, is God who resides in our souls, the souls of the redeemed who have asked Jesus to be the Savior and the Lord, their Lord. Holy Spirit dwells in us, and as a result, we can follow God with no fear. Yeah. No fear. No fear. Knowing He loves us, He yeah. provides and provides for our every need. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Holy Spirit, He filled Christians after Jesus ascended to heaven. God demonstrated His Holy Spirit by sending His Holy Spirit, His love, pardon me, by sending His Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Yeah with a sound of a violent rushing wind filling the house and distributing tongues of fire on each of the disciples. They were transformed in just like that. Mm -hmm. And they were filled with power to speak the languages of those present. Holy Spirit did it all. All. Holy Spirit doesn't need a language app, does he? He don't need a Google link. No. And the people heard. Yeah. Whew, the disciples were changed by the Holy Spirit's indwelling. Oh, hmm. Let me tell you about before the indwelling. <laughs> Prior to the indwelling, when Jesus hung on that cross, yeah. they were so terrified. Yeah. They scattered and they hid themselves. Only two of them remained. Come on. One of them denied ever, ever having known Jesus. But on that day, on that day that they received the Holy Spirit, they were regenerated, they were renewed, and they were filled with courage, and they were undaunted to witness for Jesus. Nothing was going to hold them back. Not even the threat of death stopped them from walking and talking in His Spirit. And yes, Holy Spirit did help them to suffer and to die for their Lord. Let me tell you, people, people even today are suffering and dying for Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God. He is our advocate. He is our comfort. He is our helper. And what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend. We need the Holy Spirit. Because during our lives, we battle a lot of pains, don't we? Yeah. We have worries. Yeah. We have insecurities that we yeah. don't tell anyone about. Yeah. We have illnesses. We have the sorrows and the separations even of death. Yeah. And there are times when you're so sorrowful that you cannot even pray. And the Holy Spirit, and He's the one that prays for you. Yeah. He advocates for you and He intercedes for you with groanings that are way too deep, even for words. Holy Spirit, thank you for praying. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus said, He said, Come unto me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. approach God so that we can enter into his comfort. Uh -huh. In John 14, 16, Jesus tells his disciples, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Yes. He walks beside you. He steadies you. He guides you. He's always going to be with you. He's not going to leave you. Well, how do we remain steadfast in our Christian walk without the Holy Spirit? We don't. We don't. And that's why we say with Jesus, 
The one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Yeah. So stand firm, stand firm, yeah. and will be saved. Yeah. We need the Holy Spirit so that we can persevere in those dark days. I like that song, when it's dark, the heat is there. And when we're downcast and they, there's just not nothing, not, not good, good grammar, but hey, that's gonna lift us up, nothing. But you know what, there is someone and that's Holy Spirit. Oh dear God, yeah. yeah. He bestows His power upon us. Yeah. He loves us, yeah. and you can persevere in your dark moments. Yeah. Trust Him. Yeah. Jesus loves you, yeah. brothers and sisters. God wants you to know right now yeah. that the same Holy Spirit who baptized and empowered those disciples will also baptize and empower you. Yeah. They didn't have silver or gold, and I really don't either. <laughs> they didn't have silver or gold, but they had something much better. They had Holy Spirit of power to heal the lame, to heal my sister, uh -huh. cast out demons, and even raise the dead to life. Tell you what, I myself, I don't talk about it much. I myself saw Come on. Holy Spirit power in my own life. Come on. When I came under attack by demons that wanted to kill me, Come on. through a friend who was overtaken by demons. Come on. Honestly, my prayer was one of total desperation. Yeah. I knew the Holy Spirit had to save me, and I knew he was the only one who could fight for me, and I needed him right now. I mean, my knees were just hitting each other. I was so frightened, and I said, oh, Jesus. And I didn't say it like that. <laughs> I yelled. Well, he saved me from that horrible hostility attempting to end my life, and the demons, sadly, they left my friend bruised and beaten up. I was untouched. Amen. Untouched. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. My friend's father, she was a uh, daughter of a Satanist high priest. I didn't know that when I met her, but yes. And this influenced her very greatly. Mm. But you know what? Praise be to God that my friend is now a saved, sanctified woman. Amen. And you know what? She spread the word of God. Yeah. Today, the Apostle Paul says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds. Holy Spirit can and will empower you. Ask him to forgive you your sin. Yeah. Ask him to reside in you. Yeah. And he will fill you. He will anoint you yeah. for his special service that he has planned just for you. Oh, yeah. We've all been called to preach. Yeah. We all have been called. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Preach the gospel. Yeah. We've all been called to proclaim release to the captives. Yeah. We've all been called to heal and to set free the downtrodden. Yes. People who are captive to addictions can be released. Yes. Those who suffer illnesses can be healed. Yes. Those who are in despair, in deep despair, can be set free. Yes. Yes. They can have new life breathed into them yes. by the Holy Spirit. Yes. It's our responsibility and it's our joy to tell yes. them in the Holy Spirit power, Jesus loves you. Yes. You and I are called to be witnesses for yes. Jesus, for his salvation, which he readily gives to all people yes. who call on him. Yes. Romans 10, 14 says, How shall they hear without a preacher? Well, You're the preacher. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The Romans says, the, pardon me, the Bible says in Romans 10, 15, yeah. how beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad tidings of good things. Well, let me tell you, as I was writing this sermon, <laughs> my computer locked up. 
It's still locked up. I don't know. And now the only way that I can open it, which I haven't done yet, is to lose every single thing, every picture, every writing, every sermon that's in there. All right? I'm going to tell you, this made me very upset. I was like in a state of mourning and in a state of sadness. I felt sick to my being for a couple of days. Let me tell you what happened. I thought, you know what? This doesn't matter. <laughs> oh. When was the last time that I mourned for somebody who was lost? And they're separated from God. And their eternal destination is hell. When was the last time I mourned that way? Why would I mourn for a computer more than a soul? Oh, dear God. Having known his salvation and Holy Spirit power, let us care deeply for lost souls and tell them about Jesus and the power that he has to overcome death, to overcome disease. Jesus loves them. Holy Spirit has called you. He's filled you and he's anointed you to do a special service. Holy Spirit has given us all spiritual gifts and will guide us as we reach out to the dying lost. We like to talk about the gifts of prophecy, right? Of tongues and miracles. Mm -hmm. And we rightly marvel at their exceptional display. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you though, <laughs> and this is good, when I look around this temple, I see many gifts. Mm -hmm. Beautiful gifts that the human eye may overlook if we're not paying attention, but God doesn't. He knows and he sees. He's the one that gave it to me. I see the gifts of quiet strength in you, steadfastness, discernment, the ability ability to speak the right word at the right moment. I see the gift of love and joy in you in spite of the things you've had to go through, in spite of your difficulties and in spite of the great losses that you've had to go through. I see that. I see that. And you have blessed me. Power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You press on. You shine forth because the Holy Spirit is in you and God is calling you. And he's quickening, quickening your spirit to say with the prophet Isaiah, Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, send me. As you use your special gift, yes, God's going to guide you. Listen to him. He speaks through his word, amen, through other people, and through his still, small voice that speaks much louder than words. And as your spiritual ears and eyes are open, you're going to see with clarity when, where, and how to use his gifts. And when he says, do it, do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Don't let your gifts sit idle. Don't let them sit idle. Tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about my truck. I love my truck. I have a red truck. No, I love Well, for a while it was broken. And it sat for a long time. And when we were finally able to get it fixed, my brother-in-law fixed it, and he got after me. He scolded me. He said, don't ever let your vehicle sit like that anymore. You'll ruin it that way. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Well, she runs by now. Yes, she is, she is. Tell me this. Are you running by? Or are your gifts sitting idle? Oh. Come on. Holy Spirit. Let us follow the example of the disciples who obeyed Jesus when he told them, stay and wait until you are clothed with power from on high. Let us also obey Jesus when he empowered them by the Holy Spirit. They spoke the word and let us speak the word as he commands us. He commanded them. He's still God and he's commanding us now. Amen.
We can be the witnesses that God called us to be. First off, in our homes, with our family. Do we edify, do we build up our family? Or do we tear them down with our words and with our actions? Allow the Holy Spirit to enter and fill every room in your home. Give him especially, especially the room in your heart. So that you can be that safe place for your family. So that you can be the sanctuary. And that you can guide them to salvation. Your children and your loved ones. That, my family, is your Jerusalem. Right? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, let us then... I, I'm so sorry. Let us also spread the, the word... In our communities, Lord. Yeah. Yes. And, and that, our, in our communities, is our Judea and our Samaria. Be the light for your work. Be the light in your neighborhood. Yes. Yes. The Holy Spirit empowers you to be that spiritual lifeline. To spread the gospel even to the remotest parts of the earth. That message of salvation that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. He walked the earth. He lived a perfect life. He died a perfect death. He was buried in a tomb where he lay for three days. Then God raised him from the dead and he ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you for you and for me. And he's empowering us to do all that he commanded us to do. You see, he gave us a command. Don't you think he's going to empower us? Yeah. <laughs> okay, finally. We are, you and me, we're empowered and we are commanded to tell people that through Jesus' salvation, we have access to God's kingdom. Amen? Great place to be. To his almighty presence. All you got to do is pray. You're in his presence anyway, but praying, you're even closer. And we have access to his eternal life of unimaginable joy and peace because of the love of Jesus and the stripes that he suffered for you and for me. We have that access. And he calls each one of us to be preachers. We're all preachers. All right. Mm -hmm. We must preach about his forgiveness. We must preach about his cleansing. Cleanse us up completely. Let your sins be like scarlet. They shall be white as snow. Mm -hmm. We must preach about his saving grace. People are going to hell. We need Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit power and the authority to do so. So, together, let us work and live for the day that our master tells us well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Don't you want to hear those words? Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Praise God. So, the next time that someone asks you, oh, what do you do for a living? You tell them, I'm a Holy Spirit-filled preacher ordained by the Most High God.
ready to preach that sermon. She went, she went right into the word. My brothers and my sisters, we have heard Mr. Valerie Robles preach her initial sermon. In the Baptist church, we attest to the calling of the person that God has called. So I stand before you this morning and ask for all who can that will acknowledge that God has given us evidence that he has called Mr. Valerie Robles to the gospel ministry to signify by saying amen. Just as we were expecting a blessing, God showed up, and I'll tell you that he gave us a word today on how we can keep the clutter out of our lives. God doesn't want us to be in that revolving door of reforming and then backsliding, reforming and then backsliding. 
that's a position of no hope. But our God wants to give us hope. My brothers and my sisters, if we would trust in the living God, we would do what God wants us to do to be the regenerated people he wants us to be and to go through that process of transformation and sanctification. God will show us how that we can have a spirit-filled life, a life of peace, a life of hope, a life wherein we are in right standing with him. Jesus loves you. He died for you. And he wants you to receive him as Lord and Savior. If you've never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, won't you make this the day? Won't you make this day the day? Won't you ask God to forgive you of your sins and to come in your life and be your Lord and Savior? We thank you for joining us. And we pray that if you're ever here in San Angelo, that you would stop by 721 West 19th Street, Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. You could join us for our Wednesday night Bible study at 6.15 p.m., our Sunday morning Sunday school at 9 uh, a.m., or you could join us for the worship hour at 10 a.m. We thank you. We praise God for you, and we pray that God will bless you and God will keep you. That is our prayer. Have a blessed day.
the victories you won. 